spoke yesterday a little bit about how you've been competing for so long and never really had breaks. What's just it been like to have this time off and like what has it done for you mentally and physically and just you know, in terms of benefits? Just, just, just great and I decided to take a longer break before the fight with Valentina Shevchenko that I, I knew that after the fight I was going to take a longer uh, break because people know me only from from the UFC but I've been it's it's a great year I turned 32 and I promised to myself to my friend to a friend of mine that it's going to be the best uh, uh, year of my life uh, and because I went through some difficulties in my personal life for the last two years I lost the belt and like my life was well, just went down like uh, personal wise and business wise but you know what actually it was just a lesson and it was just a stop and I'm just uh, I'm just great and better now so uh, it was great and uh, and uh, uh, it's my fifth anniversary in the UFC this year uh, that's amazing because I remember the moment when I was uh, just uh, making a transition from white tie to MMA and uh, I was waiting to sign with the UFC I became the champ very quick I was very dominant so uh, I've been competing for last 16 years and honestly I was jumping from camp to camp and people are only talking about my uh, 10 months break but people don't talk about my uh, 16 years of uh, huge uh, legacy you know because I've been uh, competing in Muay Thai boxing king boxing I did 100 fights before uh, I became MMA fighter uh, it's going to be my 13th fight in the UFC I don't know maybe 18th or 19th in my fighting career but uh, it was great I wanted to rest reset my body physically mentally uh, so after the fight I was back home I, I even I lost I was proud of myself my team I kept my head up because I gave a good fight with Valentina Shevchenko we saw her uh, performing uh, with this Carmo, she just ripped her head off, you know. So I was very proud. I I could stand with the real champ for long five rounds. That's that's the that's the thing. But guys, uh, after resting, like taking this break, I got to the point where I wanted to be. It's not like I didn't feel the power anymore, you know. And I was not motivated to train. Or uh, but uh, you know, like stepping into the octagon, starting a new camp, it's always like a debut for me. So I'm I'm getting excited because I love my job, my big passion and hobby. Uh, sacrificing for so many years became my my job, and I can make a living of it. You know, but sometimes we get too far. We want to get more and more. I always hundred percent into want what I'm doing in my life, and this is what I was doing. You know, giving myself, getting myself. But I forgot about myself. My it was life changing for me to signing with the UFC, winning the belt. Uh, you know, I approach a lot in my life, but I couldn't enjoy it even. You know? So this is what Tyron Woody says, it's like not from zero to hero, from nothing to something, you know, and it was time to enjoy myself, you know, I, I built a house in Poland, I, I started a few ideas like business, uh, businesses and uh, I've been to seven countries already on, on five different continents and I, right after the fight I'm going to Bali, I, I, I always uh, love to travel and I want to do more like uh, this year I started like January 1st I flew to Thailand for two weeks uh, so I want to be focused uh, more also on, on myself as, an, as a woman as a human and I love to travel I love photography I love doing businesses uh, you know I have like I said I have so many hobbies and passions and and uh, making myself happy uh, I know I can do more in the octagon so uh, this is who I am today and it's like people asking what's new what did you change like nothing just I just brought the old Joanna like with the full happiness and and if you don't have your head clear your heart strong you cannot go further you know and and I cleared the patch uh, I'm surrounded by good people, uh, no toxic people in my life anymore. Uh, you know, I cannot compare myself to Freddie Mercury, but if you watch the movie like Bohemian Rhapsody or if you even watch Rocket Man, you, 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 uh, so you, you see that there are rats, you know, like family, they pushing away your family, your friends, your closest one, and like, uh, you, you just want to, you know, stay calm and you seek of these people so you always say yes, yes, yes. And these people like making tons of tons of uh, bad things around you, you don't even know about. So I'm very happy that uh, I have good people around me right now and I know who I am and, and that's the point. I'm excited to step to the octagon on Saturday. I'm focused on my on uh, Saturday's fight with Michelle Waterson. But of course, uh, I set my goals. I set my... 
yearly goals, monthly, uh, weekly, uh, daily goals, uh, because every day we have to uh, be able to do some adjustments, uh, because life is surprising us every day. Um, but uh, I want to be the challenger and fight for the throwaway belt again. I, and I, I know that this uh, Saturday, Michel Watterson is just my next stop. So I put on a hell of a performance for the last 13 long weeks. It was hard and uh, before every camp, I'm like quality over quantity. But, you know, I'm such a hard worker and, and I, I always have to has, ha, I always have to have this feeling that uh, I've done everything I could, everything and anything I could. So 100 uh, percent, I will step to the octagon on Saturday and tomorrow on the wings at the wings. Can you talk about the, the pressure of being a champion? A lot of champions have come out and said, most notably uh, GSD. And you mentioned how you know you took a break and that was very beneficial for you. And you know that's something you can't really do. Yeah, champion. I was jumping like, of, of course, like if you if you like win lottery, you cannot just stop. You must keep on going, you know, bringing the uh, keep on like. Uh, Taking from this lucky star, of course, when I became the champ, I, I had my title defense very quick. I was very dominant champ. I'm one of the. I was one of the most dominant uh, and active uh, champions in the in the UFC, men or women. That's a, that's a good point. My legacy is big, but uh, you know, sometimes you, you you forget about yourself. But uh, like I said, give as much, get as much, but don't, don't forget about yourself because. Uh, at the end, we are just uh, only humans, and I'm very happy that after I lost to Rose, it was a difficult time. I paid the item, I paid the ultimate price. For some things happen happened before the fight, but um, the thing is that uh, people saw uh, 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 a human in me, not a machine, winning machine anymore. You know, and and I cemented my legacy a long time ago. Uh, but but yeah, that, that's it. And, uh Talk about sort of uh, what makes you different from the other strawweight champions because, as you said, like man, like I don't want to say like I give lots of credit and and uh, to to Rose, Jessica, and and Wiley now because they made it to the league. Like when people doubt you after you uh, lose the belt, like you win the belt and they tell you like oh you're not the real champ. You have to defend the belt and then you have to do this one more time, one more, then another, another. But that's the point. In the UFC, there is more than 500 fighters. Like all of the martial artists, like 99,9 percent of the martial arts athletes from all over the world are dreaming about to get into the UFC. And very often, when they get to the UFC, they are like, "I'm the man, I'm the girl, I sign with the UFC." But this, the hard, they don't know that the hard work starts uh, after you sign with the UFC. And the point is, like, if you get to the top, you a goat. If you if you fight for the belt and you win, you the man on a, or, or or a girl, you know, like. Uh, you the you the god, and if you defend like not one, two, three, but five or six times, are like Ronda Rosie, you the real god, you know. And 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 that's the point. People are always gonna doubt you, test you, and throw stones at you. But you know what I do with these stones? I pick the stones and I cement my fundamentals, you know. So they just make me stronger because I know who I am. I know who is Joanna and Jacek, and I know who I want to be as an athlete, human, and woman, and businesswoman in the future, and uh, how I want to hustle every day. Uh, that's uh, that's the point. And what makes me different? Like like I said, I don't want to take any, any of... Uh, the, the former or actual, uh, actual uh, champions, the strawweight champions. It's the lightest division in the UFC, but uh, this division brings lots of fire, lots of attention, and the, the, the fights are very good. Uh, the rivalization is, is on a top level, but uh, it's not easy to become the champion but it's definitely more difficult to defend the belt because uh, you have more stuff to do, more obligations. Uh, uh, you, you need to just uh, have more, you need to be more disciplined if you want to hold the belt. Like you can see Rose couldn't keep it, keep with that. Same Jessica, now we will see Wei Li Zhang. But, uh, you know, if I know I will step to the octagon with Wei Li Zhang fighting for the belt. So I don't see her like defending the belt even once. So it means, it, it means a lot to me. Like people say, oh, but you're not the champ anymore. <laughs> I'm not the champ. I'm still the champ. Of course, I'm still the champ. Even with, if I don't hold, the, if I don't have the belt physically, I'm still the champ because I made it to the to, to the league. Same Rose, Jessica, and Whaley. But uh, the point is like, hey, defend this one, two, three, four, five times. You know, that's it. We, we so they can doubt me. We haven't seen a uh, female champion like a two-time female champion in the UFC where someone's lost the belt and come back. It's happened yeah. a lot in the men's division. What would it mean for you to be the first to be able to do that? 
I know it's going to to happen very soon, and if you know, if I will win very quick this Saturday, uh, you know, I can step to the octagon very soon. Doesn't matter. Uh, I had some interviews with the Asian outlets, media outlets yesterday. They've been asking me. They are super pumped for this fight. They know what's up. They know what's coming, and uh, they 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 ask me if I would like to fight by the Zankin. In, in Poland, for example, because she's uh, having problems with the U.S. visa, I said, of course, we had an amazing uh, national stadium, brand new, 60,000 people. Actually, there was one MMA show, so it's time for the UFC to take over. The same as we, as I did in, in Melbourne uh, three years ago with Ronda, Holly Holm, and Valerie Letourneau, come even and main event females fight. I'm ready to do this again, maybe in my homeland in Poland. Next 21 hours or so look like for you in terms of you know getting down the way. I know you're drinking water there, so you're yeah. feeling pretty good right now. I just had the food. I, I did few interviews. I did some workout, and next 24 hours uh, are going to be beautiful, man, because I feel great. Uh, I don't know if I should tell you that I'm not going to make a wait or I'm going to make a wait. Wait, wait till tomorrow. Sorry. I will play with you. I'm sure you're glad to get past like yesterday's meeting. Is she going to make it? I don't know. We'll find oh, out. Oh, that's but, um, fine. I'm sure uh, you're glad to get past yesterday. Everyone is coming at you hard about, you know, the, you know, I don't the, see that, man. I don't see that coming. Well, and, like, at the press conference, at least at the scrum, you know, we, we were asking questions. Oh, okay. You weren't really having it. Can you just kind of describe, like, what that was like for you and what, you know, you know put that behind you? Like nothing. I like nothing. I know who I am and I know where I am. Why people don't ask me how I feel. How do like, you know? Uh, I feel great, man. I, I'm going to be on weight, and I will so face weighed, Michelle what, Waterson on Saturday. What would you say you weighed um, like yesterday when we spoke to you? At the Beautiful weight. Yeah. Like there is nothing to worry about. I'm professional. I always take my business from uh, the beginning till the end. How many uh, champions after they lost, they haven't, they didn't show up at the press conference? I took a big, big, big lesson uh, two, three years, uh, two years ago in in New York, and I show up. I always take care of my business because I'm a real businesswoman and I'm real athlete and I'm real man. I'm very honest. That's the that's the thing, and I always take care of my business. But I have learned that health. Uh, health and life first. Uh, that's the point, you know. I would not push uh, something through the limit if it was not worth it, you know. And my health, there is no price for my health, you know. And um, if I was, if someday I'm not going to be able to make a weight, I give my 30%, someone is going to have a good paycheck, good payday, extra, I don't care, you know. You, you can buy life. We were okay. pleasantly surprised to see you yesterday, for sure. Um, talk about the division and what it does mean that no one's really been able to hold on to the belt at all. Um, you know, not even for one successful defense. <laughs> you know, what, what does that Rose say did about that, the division yeah. since you Oh, Rose did that, and yeah, yeah. Man, that, 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 it means that uh, I was the, the right pers person in the right spot, you know, that uh, I was the, the champ for a long time for, for a little reason, that it means a lot to me, you know, and. Like I said, when people doubt me, I say, look at look at the numbers, you know. Uh, and in such a short period of time, I I, I got from here to here, you know. And like, uh, there is legacy, be, be, you know. Uh, it's not only guessing, it's the legacy be behind me, you know. Uh, you know what, like, after, like, after, like, I have learned that you have to be honest with yourself, you know, and I used to be honest, and I'm an honest person, like, people like to be, like, super sweet and tell you what you want to hear, but this is not w what life is about, you know, because sooner or later the fake will come up, so uh, I always want to be the honest, like, people might not like me, but I want to be honest, and that's the, that's the point, and this is what I respect. Uh, and what I expect from people, but I have learned that I should get even more from from the life because sometimes I was like the shy girl from little town in Poland, and I was not taking as much. But now I know what doesn't mean to be at the top and and fail and get back and like deal with the high, uh, you know, the the top 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 businesses, you know, like different money wise, exposure wise, fighting fight, uh, if it's about fighting. Uh, business as well so yeah I just I just grown and, and we take 
big lessons every day and uh, I always wanted to make people happy, you know, but if if you don't make your yourself happy, you're not gonna make people happy and this is who I am today, you know, so, um, like I said, I, I cleared the patch, surrounded with the good people and, uh, you know, when you turn 30 years old, you think you experience enough, you're smart enough, but I got the biggest beat up and I turned 30, 31, so, and 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 I know it was only about the time, like months to maybe 24 months, to to clear it, and and I'm back, and I feel totally different, man. Like people ask me, hey, something changed. Like they they check my picture, they're like, the the vibe, the 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 atmosphere. I'm like, fucking I myself, and that's it, you know. And I I don't care if you like it or not, you know, because like people doubting, like, oh. Uh, Give me that, do that, make that. Like, do you gonna like work in the gym? I know how hard I work every day, two, three times a day. If I have time, I do media, I do sponsorship. I love doing uh, media, TV programs back home in Poland. Looking forward to work more with Balenji Group, who I just uh, signed with, and do more media and obligations uh, here in the States. Uh, I love it. Uh, but, uh, you know, people can give you advices, but they are not in the business, so they don't know shit what they are talking about, you know? Last question. Was it just the time that it, uh, it took for you to get over those losses, or did you do anything to sort of deal with that? Um, what do you mean? Well, you, you mentioned how, um, yeah. you know, they hurt you, the, yeah. the losses. Um, like it, it did, you, you know, it was something new because I was very dominant in Muay Thai. I was very dominant in Muay Thai, and of course, losing was not on, uh, not uh, in my daily basic. So the the, the the loss I took with Rosna Mayunas, it was surprising. And then I was like, I went to my locker room. I was crying. I know everyone was posting like videos of me crying. Oh, now she got what she deserved. Like, man, if people would like, you know, if if the arrogant people would pay like this, like uh, you know, for being arrogant, so life would be like easier and nicer you know but the, the that's not not the goal you know but the, the thing is that you know i have learned about like myself that the losses i took like that so i went to the locker room i was crying but then i was like it doesn't hurt and my chin is good okay i got knocked out but hey the, the life is going on and i'm like i like i like i told you guys i have so many passions hobbies uh, passions hobbies and i love life and I'm living my life and and I'm very thankful and grateful to the UFC, Dana White, Lorenzo, he was the boss uh, back in the day when I signed with them. Uh, I remember my first uh, pay-per-view check and they told me about the numbers after the Melbourne show 193. It was it was life-changing so um, I will love uh, love them till, 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 till my death, you know for giving me a chance and what I love about UFC that when you sign with them doesn't matter if you're a female fighter or, or man fighter you, you get the same you know and it's all up to you where you're gonna make it and how you're gonna make it to the top. One more question here you had. Um, I was just gonna ask you what it was like to see the Polish flags down here in Tampa yesterday. That's beautiful these fans are from here uh, they have Polish uh, roots, so it was amazing. And uh, there is more people coming. That uh, so many people are texting me, sending messages, print shots of the tickets, and reservations. So I'm I'm very excited, you know, very excited to see all of them. And what I saw in Canada, Toronto, or Calgary, because I fought two times in Canada last year. Man, like so many Polish flags, and it means that the fans are with me, you know, and there is no sport without fans, so so big thanks to these guys, but it's like extra, extra motivation. I always spread my hands, like give uh, high fives to my fans, and I just love it, you know. Uh, uh, I just so pumped the, the few minutes or few seconds before I step into the octagon. That's my life, and I love doing this, you know, so um, focus on final weight cut, uh, fight, going to be beautiful.